Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So today is going to be Neuroflights updates and about the upcoming Maiden within a week and a half. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the things here. All right. So before continuing on, a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCBUA, for sponsoring our open hardware flight controller. This is a great place to have your PCB manufactured as well as assembled with great quality and fast service. Now, this project, if you're new to this, this is basically beta flight with the PID controller removed and changed with a neural net or an AI to do all the PID tuning for you. So you'll never have to do any PID tuning and it becomes dynamic. Now, this has been proven to work. There has been made in flights. However, just only by the creator. Now, in order to compile Neuroflight, you need to train an AI. And the way you train them is you train them through something like an environment. You give them an environment and they're usually called gyms. You know, there's gyms for Atari games. There's gyms for all kinds of things. Here, as we can see, the creators of Neuroflight also created the environment to train the, uh, the AI in, which is called GymFC. Now, if we open GymFC, it's available on GitHub. All the source code is available. However, this is V1. And V1 will not allow you to have a real quadcopter work in real life. And that's for a couple reasons, which is oscillations. Also, it thinks that it's on a, basically a gimbal and some other things as well, which we're about to get in. So GymFC V1 is the source code available. However, if we take a look at his paper here, he will tell us that what GymFC V2 will do to fix all of these things and in order for us to be flying. And this is what he was testing on. Now, GymFC V2's source code will not be available, as I understand, until uh, late spring. So I can't wait that long. And this gives me a really good time to really dig in and understand how everything is running and do all the modifications by myself. So let's take a look at this. So GymFC V2 just gives a new reward system. Now let's understand something about reward system and observation space. Now for an AI to train, it needs a reward. So it knows it did something right. And observation space is kind of like its eyes. So we can see what it's really doing in a way. And in GymFC V2, we gave it a new reward system. Now on GymFC V1, the reward system was just basically the error, how much off you were from where you're supposed to be. That's all the reward, that's all it did, nothing else. However, in this one, we had to, he had to apply two new rewards in order to have it fly in the real, in the real world, which is one for minimizing output oscillations and the other one for minimizing control signal output values. So the minimizing control signal output value reward is basically for the AI to know that, uh, to get a reward to act as if it's not on a fixed gimbal or its center of mass is fixed. So that's what this reward implies. And we're going to get into the equations here and help you understand them. Now, it's just the addition of all three rewards here, which is the error, and this is the error, Y, which is the reward to, uh, to minimize control output signal, and the R delta, which is minimizing output oscillations. Now, output oscillations are a problem because the AI doesn't know that you, it'll burn a motor if it's in the where it's supposed to be, and it just keeps oscillating to keep that area, so it just doesn't know that. So you have to introduce some kind of reward or something in order for it to know not to do that. And that's a bad thing. So now let's go ahead and start breaking down the reward system and how it's working. So here we have RE and this is the error of how far it's off. And that's one of the rewards that needs to be added together to give the final reward. So we can see the equation for RE is as follows. We have uh, this plus this plus this. Now you might say, okay, what the hell is this? Well, this is actually a very fancy way to say the error on pitch axes plus the error on yaw axes plus the error on the roll axes. You square all of them and then you add them and then you turn them into a negative. And that's where you get RE from. You want this to be zero because that'll be a negative and it'll take from the other positive rewards here. So that's what that's doing here. Very simple, very straightforward. Now, if we go to the minimizing output oscillations, this is where it gets trippy. Now, the way this works is from my understanding, especially when plugging in the math, uh, this will give you a reward if you use under 1% throttle, if you're in a specific error band. And what that means is you only start giving this reward once it's in the area of where it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to start giving this before. So we can say, once we get into uh, two degrees of where we're supposed to be, start introducing this reward in order to modify the reward output in order to minimize the output oscillation. And this might look kind of trippy and it did in the beginning, but after a while of looking at it and understanding how it's working, it just makes more sense. It's just a really fancy way of saying don't use more than 1% throttle. And I hope I got this correct. And if I didn't, let me know down in the comment section. So let's understand this equation here. So here we have 
Uh, what this means is we have to do it for every motor, okay? So we just to ignore this part. And this is a constant, and this constant he pulled up from somewhere. It's 0.5, uh, which we'll get into later on. But we don't really need to look at that just yet. We need to look at this part here. So max, what does max mean? Max means return uh, the highest number. So we have 0, and then we have this equation. So if this equation returns a number higher than 0, then it'll return that number. And if this equation returns a negative, then it'll just return 0. So it just returns the max number. So that's simple. Now let's understand what this equation means. All right, so let's go ahead and start understanding this equation. So we have delta y max, which is basically full throttle, which here it's being represented by 100 squared, which is 10,000. So we're going to say 10,000 minus and the current motor output, just one motor. So we're going to say that motor was outputting 50% throttle, which is what? 5,000 because 10,000 is 100%, 5,000 is 50%. So we're going to say 10,000 minus, and then we're going to say it put 50% throttle and we're going to say squared and we're going to say equals and that returns a negative 24 million and which is bigger now the zero or the negative 24 million obviously the zero so it's going to not give it a reward so it will not get a reward for this now for example if we use just a uh, less than one percent throttle so here's ten thousand and we're going to subtract and 100 is one percent throttle so we're going to use 0.9 percent of a throttle and squared and if we equal this we get 199 so that's a positive reward so this equation is going to return 199 that's good uh, now we have to do this for every motor output so let's just say for example every motor outputted exactly 0.9 percent throttle so what we're going to have to do is we have to add all the motors like this that's what the sigma means just add them all together and then we multiply them by the constant beta beta is 0.5 so we just multiply it by 0.5. That's what I haven't played with these constant. You can play with these and they can uh, help in the reward system. And I'll explain how in a little bit. So here we got a 398, uh, 398 reward, which is good. It's a positive reward. And again, if we were to get negatives, then this would equal basically zero. Now, 398 is good. Now, if we take a closer look down here, he said, using the same training and validation procedure previously discussed, we found a neural net, which is the AI, trained in GMFC V2 compared to GMFC V1 resulted in a 87.95% decrease in oscillations, basically, motor output, which is really good. And again, this equation will only run if it's within 2% off or within 3 or 5% of where it's supposed to be in order to minimize the oscillations. Really nice and kind of straightforward. Now, if we go down here, this one, this equation, I, I understand how to execute it, but I just don't understand what it's doing. And the reason for that is because to execute this in code is quite easy to understand, but to understand how it's working, I haven't really dug into it because I was really all, using all of my time on this equation and trying to understand it because I still think maybe I'm incorrect by like five or 10% on something here. But the reason why I'm also making this video, if anyone knows or anyone has an idea, come join the Discord and help me there. That'd be super awesome. And uh, we can discuss this even further in detail. Now, after all of these equations are set, and I've set every single equation, there's something else that needed to be modified. And I overlooked this yesterday. I should have had a basically uh, trained AI today to work. Now, GMFC V1, now we talked about rewards now, now let's talk about the observation space, where, you know, basically it's eyes. In GMFC V1, it returned the arrow of each axis, right here, ET, so the arrow of each axis at each time step, okay? Because it goes by steps, so we could say each step is 0.1 of a second, for example. So the arrow for each axis, that's what it returned for the AI to see, and also the RPM of each motor, because this was relying on ESC telemetry. Now, this is going to be, this is not a very good way to do it because if you train it on ESC telemetry, then it expects when you go 100 RPM that the quad will actually flip, but that's not the case. Every motor is different. Every battery is different. You know, all these types of things are different. So uh, he had to remove this. Obviously, that's what, what I have to do with the code now. So I did remove this and the new observation space must be the error same exact thing the error of each axis and the change in each axis from the previous step so we just subtract the previous error from the last time step and this time step and then that's what we return here so now we return six values 
instead of seven and why seven because it was for each axis the error and four for each motor's rpm and now we just return the three axes error and the change in each axis is error from the last step so that's a total of six here now i did everything here however last night i was just completely out of it and what i've done is i didn't put the change in the observation what i did was just posted the previous error from the last time step and that didn't give me any results so this is the only thing that i think i just need to just do now real quick it shouldn't be that easy just subtraction and we should be good to go um so that is the current progress and the current status of this next will be the compiling and um yeah it's it's, it's a pretty interesting and um if anyone wants to join it you have the discord there so come join me that'll be super awesome i do have a couple people working with me for example fat tony and a guy named gene really 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 great guy and um it's been a very fun experience so if you want to come join me there that'd be super awesome also check the links down below i have the links to these papers down below and if you can check the links for the flight controllers down below those greatly support the channel and keep this project afloat and well that's it guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you guys think down in the comment section and i'll see you in the next one peace out guys